every year almost 400,000 road traffic accidents are reported in India. An estimated 150,000 people lose their lives in one. That means about 15 to 20 people die in a road traffic accident every single hour in our country. Many more are critically injured. Accidents involving cars recorded the highest number of injuries and fatalities next only to two-wheelers. And the reason for almost 75% of these accidents is overspeeding. What exactly happens to the human body during a car crash? With some understanding, can we modify the outcome of these incidents? If so, can they really be called accidents? Let us try answering these questions through this video. My name is Dr. Gokulesa. I am the bloody physiologist. Welcome to my channel. Car crashes can come in all shapes and sizes. However, a large majority of them are head-on collisions. The collision can be with a stationary or a moving object. It can be a tree, a building or even another vehicle. This is the scenario that we are going to focus here. When we mash that accelerator pedal and build up speed in a car, we are creating kinetic energy. When we need to slow down, we apply the brakes which helps in dissipating this kinetic energy as heat. Thus, in a normal braking scenario, this energy is dissipated gradually over a period of time in a manageable way. What about hard braking? Many of us might have experienced that one incident when we were thrown forward due to a sudden braking maneuver. Here the time available to come to a stop is less, deceleration occurs rapidly as the energy has to be dissipated faster, leading to a rather violent shedding of speed. Keeping that in mind, imagine a scenario where the entire kinetic energy of a moving car and its occupants need to be dissipated in a matter of milliseconds and almost nil distance. This is what a head-on collision looks like. And when there is not enough time to dissipate all that energy as heat via brakes, it inevitably gets transferred into other forms like massive amounts of mechanical energy. The transfer of this mechanical energy from a metal cage, the car, into a fleshy capsule, the human body, is what happens during a crash. This can break both steel and bones. This is where physics meets biology, tremendous amounts of physical forces exerting their effects on biological systems. What are these effects? In order to understand that, we need to look beyond what meets the eye. Every time someone gets involved in a car crash, they are subjected to not just one, not two, but three collisions, all in a single car crash. Collision one, metal hits metal. Collision two, body hits metal. And collision three, body hits body. In collision 1, where metal hits metal, the car collides with an object and comes to a stop. The kinetic energy of the car dissipates by breaking the car's structure and the rest is transmitted onto the occupants. In collision 2, where body hits metal, the occupant collides with an object inside the car like a steering wheel or dashboard. This is an example of Newton's second law of motion. An object in motion remains in motion until acted upon by an external force. When a car is mobile, the occupants inside are moving with the same velocity as that of the car. When the car suddenly stops, unless some restraining mechanisms are in place, the occupants continue their motion until they hit an object. Collision number 3 is where body hits body. Here the mechanism of collision is the same as that of collision 2, but the participants are a bit different. Here, the internal organs bump into the inner lining of the body cavities or bump against each other. Similar to the occupants inside the car being subjected to kinetic forces, the organs inside the body experience the same. When the occupant hits an object inside and comes to a stop, the internal organs are still moving along with the original velocity, bumping into each other. 
this can cause a variety of damages every tissue in our body has got an inherent strength to it during a car crash the collisions release shock waves throughout the body these shock waves can cause varying amounts of tensile compressive shear and torsional stress on various tissues across the body and when the forces produced by these shock waves exceed the native strength of the tissues injuries occur let us have a look at the various injuries that can result from a car crash one of the most feared injuries that can occur in a car crash is a head injury blunt force trauma can cause skull fractures and hematomas on the outside of the brain the brain itself is cushioned and suspended in cerebrospinal fluid inside the bony cranium if the forces are strong enough it can lead to traumatic brain injury when the head suddenly decelerates as in the case of a car crash the brain suspended in the csf that is cerebrospinal fluid continues moving forward and hits the front side of the cranial cavity then it rebounds to hit the back side this is known as a coup contre coup injury this causes shearing stress on neurovascular structures inside the brain shear stress can tear the blood vessels causing bleeding into the brain tissue it can damage long nerves arising from the brain leading to diffuse axonal injury which can result in neurological deficits in addition brain tissue itself can undergo necrosis as a result of the trauma the grim story doesn't end there at a cellular level damaged neurons start releasing chemicals and ions like glutamate and potassium that disrupts cerebral blood flow cellular influx of calcium and free radicals further extend the damage to the neurons leading to triggering of apoptosis all this sets up a vicious cycle that leads to considerable loss of precious brain tissue the head is connected to the body by the neck sudden deceleration can cause whiplash injuries as a result of neck hyperextension and flexion although they are more common in rear end crashes this can damage the neck structures like muscles ligaments blood vessels and cervical spine another major cavity that houses important organs is the thorax during sudden deceleration heart and lungs can hit the inside of the rib cage or sternum causing myocardial or pulmonary contusions this can also cause rib fractures a fractured rib can puncture the lung causing pneumothorax just like traumatic brain injury in the head a dreaded complication that can arise in the thorax is traumatic aortic injury sudden deceleration during a crash pulls away the relatively mobile ascending aorta and aortic arch away from the descending aorta which is well anchored to the thorax this can even lead to aortic rupture which is a potentially fatal condition The abdominal cavity contains a lot of delicate organs which unlike the brain heart and lungs are not protected by a bony cage this puts them directly in the line of fire of the shock waves that arise in a car crash organ contusions are fairly common with higher forces there are chances of ruptured spleen and lacerated liver as these organs are well anchored at one end and freely mobile on the other making them susceptible to the shearing forces fractures of long bones of the limbs along with their associated neurovascular complications are also rather common in car crashes depending on the nature of collision the velocity of impact the position of occupants and a whole lot of other variables there can be umpteen number of injuries that occur in a car crash not to mention the post traumatic stress disorders that some are crippled with this necessitates a need for action to ensure proper occupant safety Where do we start? We start up here. The first thing to do is to stop referring to crashes as accidents. This is exactly what BMJ, the British Medical Journal, did back in 2001. Referring to crashes as accidents takes away the predictability factor. Realize that it is a crash. it is predictable there are modifiers that are available which can change the outcome of a crash remember when i said that speeding is the cause for almost 75% of car crashes 
that is basically the first and most important modifier. Speed or in better terms velocity. The impact and the resultant shock waves disrupting the car and occupants are all a byproduct of the kinetic energy. And as we know, kinetic energy is directly proportional to the square of velocity. When you are involved in a 50 km per hour crash in a 1.5 ton vehicle, the energy released is close to 150,000 joules. That is like a thousand people trying to punch you all at once. Double your speed and you are left with four times this energy to dispose of. Imagine fending off 4,000 people trying to have a go at you all at once. Believe me, no matter how strong you think you are, that is just way too much energy to handle. Reducing your speeds to 40 km per hour decreases this amount of kinetic energy to just two-thirds of its initial value. Reducing speed also gives us enough reaction time to apply brakes and slow down even further. Now the kinetic energy might look more manageable but it can still cause considerable damage. That is where engineering come into play. Using engineering, whatever energy that was generated during a crash can be diverted onto other structures away from the passenger compartment. To make you understand more about this, I performed a simple experiment where a raw egg was plastered onto a toy car and made to collide with a stationary wall. Before we move on to our little experiment, if you like this video and wants to see more such interesting content in the future, please show your support by liking and sharing this video. A subscription to this channel would be awesome. Now let's move on to the accelerator. So in this experiment, we have three scenarios. In the first scenario, the accelerator hits the wall at a moderate speed. This has led to a crack in the shell. In the second scenario, it hits the wall with high speed and gets obliterated. You can see the drastic difference in outcome between the first two scenarios. Remember, twice the speed, four times the kinetic energy. In the third scenario, I have added some rolled paper at the front to cushion the impact. You can see how this dramatically improved the outcome. This is a rudimentary crumble zone. Modern cars are engineered with crumble zones to absorb as much energy of the impact as possible and allow sufficient time for the occupants to decelerate so as to minimize injuries. This takes care of collision number 1 which we discussed earlier where the car hits an object. What about collision number 2 where body hits metal? This can be taken care of by using restraint systems, namely your seatbelt and airbags. In the unfortunate event of a crash, the seat belts slow down the occupant from hitting the inside of the car. But simply wearing seat belts is not enough they have to be worn properly. Seat belts are designed to anchor us to the car at two of the strongest points in our body, the chest and the pelvis. The lap belt should be close fitting to your hips. The shoulder belt should be centered over the collarbone. If the belts are not positioned properly, they can wander off into the nearby soft tissues like neck or abdomen, which can cause injuries. The next time you see someone walking off a car crash with a broken collarbone, ask him to thank his stars because the seat belt just did its job. Then we have the supplemental restraint system, the airbags. When the sensors in the car detect a crash, the airbags are inflated in an explosive manner. The occupants are cushioned against impact and they slowly deflate, providing ample time to dissipate kinetic energy. Here also, Wearing seat belts are important, as one, most cars enable airbags only if the seat belts are fastened, and two, they slow down the occupant so that contact with airbags happen only after complete inflation. If not, the explosive inflation of the airbags can in itself cause injuries. Regarding the third collision, there is nothing that can be done to avoid the organs bumping into each other. That is inevitable. But this also brings us back to our first point. 
reducing the velocity proportionately decreases the magnitude of injuries remember twice the speed four times the energy half the speed one fourth the energy science and engineering has enabled us many ways to reduce impact energy and extend impact time but the best solution is always prevention we cannot beat physics we cannot beat physiology what we can do is to use our head to protect our head try safe live long this is dr gopalasar signing off bye bye from the bloody physiologist